Spider-Man 2 is considered by many as the greatest Spider-Man film to date. Andrew Garfield hopes to steal that crown from Tobey Maguire with his interpretation, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And he is successful. Joining me today is none other than the great Mark Ellis, co-host of Schmoes No. Thanks for swinging in and feuding with me today, Mark. I'm seriously going to leave if you keep doing Spider-Man puns. <laughs> Stick around. Spider-Web. I think we can both agree here that Tobey Maguire is the superior Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. This is a slash symbol. His constant struggle to live a normal life, the pain he feels, the uncertainty of his choices can all be seen by his vast array of facial expressions. I really like Raimi Spider-Man too, and I like Tobey Maguire, but when I see him, all I can think is this guy's desperately trying to not shit himself. He looks constipated through the whole movie. He's not afraid to emote. Andrew Garfield gives us two and a half hours of a GQ spread. Besides having Axe hair gel commercial quality hair, he's got incredible range. He goes from being a nerdy, emotional teenager to a cocky, surefire web slinger. And his voice doesn't do what I just did. I, I just want to run my hands through that thick, luscious hair of his. Mm. I fail to see how he's nerdy in the slightest, but he did play a good Spider-Man, I'll give you that. The only issue I actually had with his Spider-Man is he goofed off a bit too much at times. So we have joking in this hand, or uncontrollable weeping through three movies in this hand. I'm sorry, Righty, you've been good to me. I'm going with the left hand. And look, even if this franchise did have to rely solely on Andrew Garfield, it could work, but we also have the added dynamic of him and Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. They're fantastic together. They should date in real... I just heard they are dating in real life. My girl Kirsten Dunst has been given a very poor shake in the Sam Raimi films. No, she's not the strong, independent character that Gwen Stacy is, but she isn't weak either. It's just most men or women wouldn't hijack a police car and drive it into a man made out of electricity without the slightest care, just throwing caution into the wind. That's all the invitation I need to segue into villains. Let's talk about Electro. Jamie Foxx is electric. Besides the really neat aesthetic with the blue glowy stuff he's got, it's really fun to watch him tear up a city. Not to mention Dane DeHaan's new take on the Green Goblin and Paul Giamatti's The Rhino. Come on, if you could see one guy overact as Rhino, who would you take over Paul Giamatti? No one. These were some of the dumbest ridden bad guys I've seen since Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Maybe Spider-Man 3 is a better comparison, but still. 04 Spider-Man gives us one truly remarkable villain, Dr. Octopus. He has an actual story arc with the conclusion, and we can feel sympathy for this man thanks to actor Alfred Molina. Plus, nobody rocks a duster harder. Well, I beg to differ there, good sir. See, in high school, I rocked a pretty mean duster myself. As a matter of fact, they called me Dusty the Clown. So I was both a badass and a really funny comedian. None of that sounds real. None of it is, I can assure you. Moving on to the other performances in The Amazing Spider-Man Part 2, how about Sally Field? You have to mention Burt Reynolds' old flame as Aunt May. I doubt she's ever going to be topped in that role. There's no denying the greatness that is Say Fay, short for Sally Field, but I'm going to let my girl Rosemary Harris do the talking for me. Wait a clip on that, uh, Travis? Now would be nice. Yush. I believe there's a hero in all of us. First off, you have to earn the right to call her Seifei. Second of all, that was a low blow, dude. Welcome to hell, Mark. You're gonna hate it here. I would be beaten within an inch of my life if I didn't also mention J.K. Simmons' brilliant interpretation of J. Jonah Jameson. The guy chews up every scene he's in. He's perfect throughout the entire trilogy. In fact, he's one of the few shining beacons in Spider-Man 3. Although, to be fair, the new film did a pretty solid job with him as well. Oh wait, he's not f***ing in it. Uh, his name shows up on some computer screens. So we got that going for us, which is nice. I got, no, yeah, I, I like J.K. Simmons. Spider-Man 2 is a movie everyone can relate to. Anyone with an erectile dysfunction, perhaps? Yes. If you have two bathtubs in your backyard, Spider-Man 2 is the film for you. 
You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention, Mr. Ellis. Spider-Man 2 is a story about a guy having issues when he needs to perform. He can't summon his white sticky stuff on command like he used to be able to. You can see the path we're walking down. There's way too many screaming girls in this movie. There's more screaming chicks in this than when I rock by Duster. It's like, is this about Spider-Man or the Beatles in 1964? At least Tobey Maguire had some obstacles to overcome in his life. He has to hold a job, friendships, school, and crime fighting simultaneously. It would leave anyone a little... deflated, if you catch my drift. I'm still doing the penis thing. Andrew's, I call him Andy, Andy's struggles are there in similar and even deeper ways because he's trying to find his place in the world while simultaneously wondering what actually happened to my parents. I thought it was really nice to further that story and get some closure on that from the first film. I would have been fine with that thread if there wasn't eight other stories going on in tandem. Many people know I wasn't thrilled with the first Amazing Spider-Man, many being my mother, but the second one had so much potential. The trailers looked fantastic, even amazing, if, if you must. I haven't been this disappointed since I found out I was gonna be a father. By no means was that movie perfect, but it wasn't as cheesy as the Raimi film. Did you say you're gonna be a father? Yikes. At one point in this film, Electro shows up wearing a form-fitting, custom-tailored suit with an electric bolt down the side of the sleeve. Those aren't that hard to find. Have you been to a Dick's Sporting Goods recently? Under Armour's got some pretty inventive clothing lines. Here's where The Amazing Spider-Man 2 really shows its new coat of paint. Director Mark Webb totally nailed the action in this film, the exciting combat scenes, and Spidey slinging through the streets looks so much better than they did in Raimi's version. Now he took a cue from Raimi when he showed the Spidey sense in slow motion, so it's, it's a nod to that other inferior movie you're talking about. I agree that 10 years later we did have a nice dramatic boost in CGI, but what Sam Raimi did with that original film, that original series, is still untouched. We get to see our web crawler fight on sides of buildings, rumbling on a high speed train, and doing some really up close fighting with Doc Ock. The web swinging still looks top notch, and I know this is a whole other debate, but the organic webs just feel right to me. They feel good. I just have a hard time believing, and so did Sam Raimi, that a high school kid, second in his class, could create these mechanical shooters with what appears to be an unending supply of webbing. Then shouldn't we get to see Sutter House Rules shoot web out of his ass and not his wrists? He acted like it most of the time. We never really got to see the genius of Peter Parker in Raimi's trilogy, whereas with Andrew Garfield, you got to see him constantly have to adjust those web shooters based on his need at the time. That was sorely missing from the original trilogy. You can hand this round to me, Mark. There's, there's no shame in that. I won't judge you. Grammy Award winner Danny Elfman is back again to further enhance the score for Spider-Man 2. Its highs and lows are intense and match up perfectly with the feeling of the film. Not only that, but we get some good old fashioned punk rock songs with the likes of Yellow Card and Dashboard Confesh. The theme song though is the crown jewel and it's very recognizable. The most I took away from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is that the director really liked Philip Phillips. Was that really necessary Mark Webb, who I assume changed his last name just so he could be director of this film? Well, it's not raindrops keep falling on my head. That's for damn sure. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Sony pulled out the big guns and hired Hans Zimmer to do the score for Amazing Spider-Man 2. He collabed with some great hip-hop artists to make some really neat techno-electro kind of pulsating music when Electro was on screen. And look, I wasn't a fan of the after the during the credits music either, but at least my version doesn't have Nickelback in it. And I will do it for you. Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a cluster f Some of it works really well, better even than the original series, but the lows outweigh the highs here quite a bit. The 2004 version is still king. Great performances, intense action, and a killer score keep Spider-Man 2 as the go-to Spider-Man film. 
Sam Raimi did an incredible job making two and a half great Spider-Man movies, but like that cougar I met on Craigslist last week, even Spider-Man 2 is starting to show its age. Andrew Garfield is simply the superior Peter Parker. I really like Tobey Maguire, but nobody has Andrew Garfield's combination of acting ability and sense of humor. I can't wait to see where he takes this character in future films when we hope we get to tangle with the Sinister Six. Toby, you did great. Enjoy the rest of your life somewhere else. I mean, you can hang out in the city. I'm not kicking you out of the city, but... In all seriousness, I want to thank you, Mark, for coming on the show and feuding with me today. I think the seven fans are really going to like what they see. Thank you for having me on your channel. What will you done with the place? Look, agree, disagree. If you guys are as passionate talking about movies as we are, make sure you check out my show with my co-host Christian Harloff, Schmoes No. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, and we have a great podcast you can watch live every Thursday night, 6 to 8 p.m. PST. You can check it out on iTunes afterwards. While you're on iTunes, how about you pick up my CD, digital download, Get to the Castle. Really funny stand-up. Is there anything else I need to plug? Let me think for a minute. Hmm. Kind of... Kind of thought you came on the show for me, but I see you had a hidden agenda. You wanted to promote your own stuff. That's, that's, let's move on. Let's move past it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Why don't you give us your take on Spider-Man 2 versus the amazing Spider-Man 2? Pop it in the comments below. I know we didn't cover all aspects of the films, so let your voice be heard. And remember, this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. Thank you so much, sir. You kick ass. We both kick ass. Let's just kick ass together. Team up. I guess we just did that.